Welcome to the second part of the David Clapp uh, Blind Critique webinar, where we're going to try and get through a few more images than the last time. We had we had a lot of, a lot of um, applications, didn't we, David? Yeah, we get waylaid as well. We start start sort of mm. disappearing into the uh, into each picture. I think quite quite significant. And, uh, yeah, we're going to um, we're going to attempt this week to try and just get as much done as possible. So. Uh, no euphemisms. <laughs> um, but the idea is just basically what we're going to do. We're going to go through all the images as much as we can. We flag some ones that we like that we're going to talk a bit more about, but we're just going to give everybody the chance. He's given us some some pictures um, and uh, and have a look through all of them in a in a stream if we can, um, and then come back to the ones that we like. So half an hour of one Brilliant. style, and then half an hour of another. Hopefully, that will be uh, the well, modus operandi of the uh, of the evening. Uh, let's get going. Okay. Oh, suddenly my webcam is gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, me thrown across the room by myself. Um, I thought. Right, I starting know. off. Starting off with this one. Um, again, I'm going to. I'm, what I'm going to do is an attempt to try and pull positives and negatives out of everything as much as possible. It's very important, I think, when doing a critique. That's, that's a vital ingredient. Um, it's. I can see the point behind it. I can see the uh, why the photographer was attracted to the uh, to the concept. Uh, it just isn't strong enough. We've got um, uh, some quite dramatic clouds going on up over the top of the sky, but um, I just feel it's too much of a record shot rather than actually being um, anything particularly artistic. It's as though that uh, perhaps the photographer is right at the start of his journey and just trying to find his feet on on focal points and composition, and you know, because that's the idea. The sort of house with the uh, um, with the mast, if you like, is uh, this part up here is very much the focal point of the image. But it, the problem is, is it competes with the boat, and it's almost like you want to go around the side, walk up to the boat, and make the boat part of the image as well, perhaps, and then make the boat bigger and lead the eye through the frame, or something like that. If you're going to do a dynamic kind of landscape, but um, it wasn't one that really pulled us very hard. There's some, there's some good ones to come. Um, this one we did like, did we not, Tim? As far as I remember, we did. We did indeed. Yes. Yeah, we like this one. This was um, simply because of the fact being it's got, well, firstly, it's a really nice uh, black and white treatment, I think, that's, that's been done well. It seems like it's quite a high contrast day because of the, uh, the clouds in the back it seem to be very lit by the sun. But the circles and the way that they're all arranged is, is good. I think it could have had some greater thought. I'm sure that um, perhaps maybe uh, getting more involved in this area this part of the image perhaps would have yielded something good as well. Maybe this is one of uh, a handful of shots, so um, I always try to look at it optimistically. The the textures is what makes it. I mean, it's just fabulous. These huge discs. It reminds me of somewhere like New Zealand or something, um, but I don't really know exactly um, uh, where it is or what's going on. So um, I think uh, it, I yeah, think it's very probably. Nice. Probably on the Yorkshire coast, I think. I, I like the fact that uh, he, so. whoever, whoever this is, has not has not had to make the whites white. He's let them go slightly cooler grey, or as far as I say, warmer grey than white, and it gives it a calmer feel. Perhaps, maybe, if I go into development a second, um, I kind of quite like it like this. So it's got less of, of that as well. I thought that worked quite well. Just having a crop of the whole of the whole thing. But um, yeah, ah. it's a good, good image, nonetheless. We, in fact, we've just done exactly what we said we wouldn't do, which we just skip through always quickly. And now here I go straight <laughs> into this one. I told you to get carried away. I don't know. Um, that okay, was one of our picks. On the, let's flip on to the next one. Maybe come back to this one. Um, I think it kind of works, um, but I think I'm uh, having problems. I don't know the background's in focus. It seems like it's just you know using the foreground gold tree, which is a good find. I have to admit, it looks very nice against the greens and various other colours. But um, uh, so overall, it sort of fits together. But I'm sort of half thinking that what's going on in the background is very out of focus. And although I sort of half think sometimes when that's the case, it needs to be completely out of focus or not just losing it a bit. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to tell because of course we're always at the mercy of these smaller size images. But either way around, I think that it kind of works, but it it, it wasn't strong, and there was some as strong as it could have been. And I think there's some other stronger shots. As well, same regard to this one as well. Although the array of tones and colours seem to get together quite well, it just looks like it's quite poor visibility rather than the magic of a misty morning. Um, 
are the trees going to be in it or not in it? Um, because there's only half the trees, everything else is sort of again leading me to question that this hasn't been properly thought out. But um, uh, you know, hats off for, for at least trying. That's the main main concept and idea. Um, this one, well, again, it all sounds like I'm just going to be really cynical all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. None of them. All rubbish. No, that's not in the slightest of the case. But it's it's more that um, again, I just don't think there's any great uh, great light going on. I think it's quite heavily gradded, and there seems to be quite an imbalance between the top and the bottom. But again, it's a pleasing composition. I think it's nice. I, I always find the waterfalls, you need to get this rock right out of the way. You need to be on top of the rock so you can see the water coming down, flowing into the pool beneath, and it isn't interrupted with something that's blocking it out. So that could have done with a couple of paces forwards, and that would have tightened things up. Because you've got similar shapes, remember. You've got the waterfall here, and the tree there is is going to create a kind of uh, a balance to the shot. So, um, would you uh, would you say that it's probably this rock a little bit well. too much shadow recovery? Uh, yeah, it could be. It looks a little bit too digital. Um, that's one of the things to really hang on to is that you don't make everything uh, appear very digitally. I think, but it, to me, it's the imbalance of light. I think is probably the you know, the biggest um, failing of it. But other than that, it's um it's a pleasant enough composition that's been put together. Okay. Uh, leads us to this one. I, I, I like this actually. I think perhaps we should have flagged that. Um, um, I think you're right. It's one yeah. of our favourites actually. Now I've looked at it a second time, I really quite like it. It almost looks like it's sort of half flash lit. It's really bizarre, the, this side of the, uh, um, that, the tree trunk. That was there. my worry about it. The right hand side looks a little bit too light. Yeah, possibly. It, yeah, maybe on the it's a bit on the tree unnatural. Um, it looks like it's got a reflector. Someone's had a reflector on it or something. That's. that's um, Always slightly concerning, isn't it? But um, but other than that, no, I think it fits together. It fits together well. It's a nice, unusual flow to the shot, without a doubt. Um, I quite like the the tonality and the colours match together well. And well done for not jacking up the reds, which would have probably not been so great. Blues, yeah, it's good. I think the I think the biggest problem is is I want to see more of a either a, a, a balance or a division. It feels like I want to get more involved down the bottom. In other words, I want to come down off the bank that I'm looking at, at it from, perhaps, and get more involved in all of these lovely patterns and maybe have less C, because the C is very overwhelming. It's a large gap in the middle. And again, at the top, it's um, it, there's, a, there's a balance to the two, but this feels very, very big. And I think it would have been better with more foreground, uh, less C, and then perhaps the same division of what's going on up, up, up top. Um, also, using a wider focal length would have meant that those proportions will diminish as well, meaning that the photographer would have to get involved and get further in. Um, but no, other than that, it's a good, nice aesthetics, but just nothing that magical going on. Um, yeah, I can see the idea, but again, it's just more about the pathway, less about the vineyard, and less about the actual uh, distant hillside. And the town, which is the thing that's kind of giving you the, your focal point to the whole image. But again, it's I think it's it's not been been processed particularly well. There's a very obvious bright patches on the right hand side here, and you can really really see it under there as if someone's pulled a hard graduated filter over the, the, that section, or you know whether they've actually photographed using a grad or done it in post processing. The right hand side is definitely post processing, but up, up here it isn't. But, but you know, despite the fact that there is a division of sort of percentiles, if you like, of lights and darks that make it balance, again, it's the path is extremely uninteresting. And uh, again, I think a lot of time we get influenced by by other people's work, and perhaps that's that's a thing as well. I don't know, but yeah, it, it it's not bad, but it's nothing really there to grab me. Uh, this was good. Well, we like this with the aesthetics of it. Tim was divided, well I was divided I think more than Tim was. Do you want to take over Tim? Yeah, I mean I like this picture in terms of um, the rendering of colour I think. Um, the, 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 the transitions between the, the sand colour and that wonderful greeny, uh, it's almost jade colour of the water. Um, and you mentioned that the rocks were quite dominant left and right. But I think I, I, think I could forgive that a little bit. It may need a little bit tighter. 
Um, the sky was the thing that bothered me. I think more. I would like to pull down a little bit more attention into the into the water. I mean, what, what was your opinion? Um, it's a very nice painterly shot with good regard for shutter speed. I think that all works really well, but it's, to me it feels very imbalanced. The, the left-hand side rock is so dominating. It's almost like you need to get your wellies on and get in and get up to this bit in the middle here. Um, perhaps that would have been more interesting to play around with. I mean, you don't know how complicated it was and whether you got a complete soaking or even whether the photographer had wellies and all the rest of the things. But they're good ideas to keep them with you pretty much any time at the coast. Um, yeah, but it's got a nice oil painting sort of feel to it. The aesthetics of the breaking wave, I think, are what really adds to it. Um, but you get to the headland and you sort of go, ah, oh, and, and then you look at the left-hand side rocks and you, as you go round the image, you sort of discover nice parts. You can see the... Uh, um, you can see all that sort of section over there, the way the dark. What would it look like with a four-five crop? Say it again. What would it look like with a four-five crop? If you take a little bit from the left and a little bit more from the right. Uh, let's have a quick go. I'm becoming bothersome <laughs> with my <laughs> with my uh, my own image there. Um, let's have a quick go. Uh, do you want to a bit? What did you say, Tim? A bit off off the left. Just a bit off the left. So we've still got that. Um, second rock clear, and then a little bit more off the right. A bit off the left, so we've still got that um, second. Bit off the left, so we've still got that um, second. Run eventful color imagery. Um, it's it just doesn't have too much too much going on for them, unfortunately. Seaweed's always a really weird one. You either need really really nice thick sort of ribbons of seaweed to put them into into pictures. Just just having them hugging rocks like that does make them look. Um, it, it, I don't know, it just hasn't, doesn't have a nice aesthetic, so I think you're always better heading away. Again, I'm more intrigued by up here than I am anything else, but perhaps the idea was a test to see getting foreground sharpness, background sharpness, things on those lines, so a number of reasons to think about as to why the photographer would have done what they've done. But the foreground concept is just not strong enough, and that's, again, the, the biggest problem is it doesn't have image strength, so I will move on. Over to you, Tim. Yeah, we both liked this one, didn't we? It's um, yeah. it, the, the symmetry, and, all, and I also particularly like the small rock in the bottom right hand corner. I think I see, you see a lot of these photographs where people go for exact symmetry between the, the the reflection in the water and the subject matter, and I always think it's slightly disturbing if you go too symmetrical. So introducing that element there works for me. However, I, I think it's Maybe a bit too much sky at the top, and possibly a little bit too a little bit too bright at the top. Um, that's more like it, I think. Yeah, crop it quite tight. Oh no, that's a bit too much. I think um, the main idea would be just to bring it down a bit, maybe something like that. Just try and look at the distance between this section here at the bottom and, and the bottom of the frame, and get some kind of evenness going on. Could you lighten um, up that bottom left? Put a put a grad over. Diagonally. Yeah. Um, you mean bring this up like so, do it that way. Yeah. And push up the exposure. Yeah, we have to be quite careful, I think. I think it looks like a polarizer's been used, and that's gonna cause a, a slight unevenness at you know, especially oh, I see. polarizers in a different in a different way. Or as you turn yes. it to polarise yeah. the sky, you might find the water doesn't polarise at all, and then you polarise the water and the sky doesn't polarise. So it's again, after time, it's a game of, of balance, trying to get it right. I've never but seen I'm, that effect before, but yeah, and I, and I can see what you mean. Yeah, but I think... No, nice, a, nice effect, then. Yeah, it's a nice image. It's a nice mountain image. I'm actually even now thinking, um, even bring it into the... Bring it in away from there. And just crop it in a bit, a bit more. I think that's nice. I think that's got better balance. Lose that vertical on the left. Yeah, it's just a bit distracting, I think, overall. It really lets you sort of get involved in all of this 
craziness in here. I mean, that would have been an absolutely brilliant long lens opportunity as well. You could have done a superb abstract pano going right across this whole section here. Um, that would have worked extremely well. Um, again, I love abstracts, as you're going to see later on. <laughs> I've been going <laughs> crazy over the last couple of days. Um, the Angel of the North, uh, I think I like to think it's a, it's a grabbed moment more than it is uh, an image that, like, if you can see down here, there's a little girl mimicking the same shape as the angel. Um, and that in itself, I think, is a, um, is a nice touch, you know, sense of scale and various other things. And as you start looking around, you suddenly realize there's a couple of other people standing here, which then leads me to believe that the, um, you know, that they're, they're from a family or that it's just something, not just someone's got their daughters going around and say, right, stick your arms out. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's not a very strong shot of the Angel of the North. It's a lovely sculpture overall. It's a, it's an amazing, amazing thing. I've still never seen it. I've been to Newcastle. I can't think how many times. I've still never seen it. Um, <laughs> but overall, again, uh, let's just try a crop again. Perhaps it's slightly more effective. Just get rid of that little tree on the left. Maybe just come in slightly, um, make it more of a, of a square like that. Maybe that works as well. Um, That's better. Yeah, I think it just gets rid of some excess on the left and right and keeps all the, um, the centralised concentration on the girl and, the, and mimicking the shape, perhaps. But, uh, and we move on. Yeah. Now, I like this one, simply because of the fact being, it's amazing that whoever photographed it actually managed to get all the tops of the trees littered at the same point. It must be just exactly the right angle, because even this row behind seems to have the, just the tops lit, even the row in front does. Uh, the road to the right, and everything else. So straight away, it looks like a you know a really a really um, good moment. They they timed it well. The this section here with the with the church. The church is the focal point, but the church is is drowned by this area here, which is just too dominant overall. Now there's no other way that you can do it um, if you're trying to do a scenic, other than again trying to to crop it. It's just it, it becomes either about is it all about this, like that, does that become a more successful shot? Or is it a change of position that was needed in order to be able to emit the, the big rock, uh, rock, <laughs> if that was a rock, that'd be a huge rock, uh, the, the, um, <laughs> the large cops at the top? I don't know, it's sort of, it, it, again, it, um, there's also I a bit think of, losing, the, losing the sky helped, definitely. There's a bit of complication going on in here because you've got houses and various other things going on in the background as well. And I don't know, the more you look at it, the more you realise that it's not as strong as it could be. But nonetheless, I think that the fact that the, what we have here is an example of a, a good attempt at composition. Uh, and we've got a, a, a great attempt or great result in the lighting, which is, which is good and unusual and different. So, um, uh, so that's, that's nice. Um, we'll go to this one. It looks like a northern seaside town somewhere. Maybe it's not northern. I don't know. Difficult to say, really, where that could be. Uh, yeah, pano, definitely. black and white. Don't know whether it's a crop to create the pano or whether it's actually a stitch pano. Uh, there's no information about that. But uh, again, I just don't think it's strong enough. It just doesn't have light. It doesn't have any magic going on. And this one's coming up that, that will do. Uh, same with this one as well. Although it's uh, um, a nice array, and I think someone tried to sort of position the state you know, in between the gaps, which is good. It just doesn't have much going for it. It's just not strong enough. And um, again, it, all, that all important low light or waiting right to the end of the night could could really do with help helping to tighten things up. Again, it's all seaweed and it's mucky black stuff that's all dried and just makes you feel that it stinks as well. But um, <laughs> it's going to have no favours as well, well from me anyway. I find um, I'm a seaweed hater, but I do actually like seaweed in Chinese restaurants. But that's that's it. Um, so moving on. Now you like this one, didn't you, Tim? I liked the I liked the um, the feel of it. I think the sub subject wise, it, it's it's it, the trees are nice. Um, I think it's probably a little needs a little bit of cropping off the bottom, possibly. But I like the I like the the rendering of it, the way the way it looks, rather than the picture as a whole. See, I I have to go in there and climb the side of it and push the tree up, so it was. <laughs> so <laughs> We'll go in there and chainsaw it and chuck it over the back. I don't know. Um, I, I think that the idea's are right. I think the toning gives it that 
fine art field, which hopes that you're going to gain access to some higher level of thinking, but I just don't think that there's much more going on in there, to be honest. I'd, I'd want to get into those trees a lot closer, crop it, crop it almost around the trees and um, make it about the triangle. So we need a that's catapult, that's... massive catapult with some elastic for you over there with your large format camera. No, I could, yeah, definitely. We, we, we set up rigging all the time. <laughs> um, Next. Mountain scene, competently done, nice colours. A uh, bit competing in places. I kind of drowned a bit by looking at some of the darker areas on the left and also uh, this area here where the trees are seems to be very prominent. Whenever anything like that sort of really pulls your eye in, it's, it's always a bit difficult to sort of meander around the image looking at various other things without getting anchored to one spot. I feel like I do that a bit. The, uh, the mountains in the distance as well, I don't know where these, these are, so I'm looking for a, have a quick look and see if there's any information in here. No, it's a, it's a foreign <laughs> shot anyway, but... Um, it's uh, ooh, what have I done? We've been told that the, um, the the metadata has the uh, has the names in them, not quite as blind right. as we thought they were. So that's not a blind critique, then. I better go back and blind it. <laughs> um, uh, a lovely glacier water down there. I want to get down here. That's the other thing. Get right down in among all this. But that was really good as well. So sort we of emit the trees idea. But again, I think the main concept was just trying to get a, uh, an image that work works and balanced. Uh, again, I I'm cropping again because. Uh, um, I very rarely do this myself, but um, I wanted to do that. That stops it being so prominently left heavy, which I think um, really starts to starts to help. Uh, other than that, I think there's a nice, the nice meander of the, of the river going through is is really good. So um, a good attempt, nice light, uh, good clouds. I think the clouds could have been a bit better, We've weighted perhaps, and maybe got some clouds over this section. But it's mountain, it's mountainous. Areas and this is always a problem. Anyone who knows you've photographed in mountains, you'll know exactly what, what I'm talking about. The clouds never do anything you expect them to do ever. No. Um, they'll either stay in one spot or they'll be blasting away really fast and never seem to sort of give you the patterns you need. So it could have been that you were standing there all day and still nothing was happening. So um, something to bear in mind. Uh, over to you, Tim. For some reason, it says file could not be found. I have no idea why. Was oh, is that what one did last time? I don't know. Be, I'm not sure. Um, okay, yeah, let's move on. Think... Okay, let's not. <laughs> Leave it up for a sec, I think it possibly is a new one. Um, I'm not finding the structure in the foreground is... I, I don't know which rock I'm looking at. I don't know which yeah, rock is... they all difficult. compete with each other, that's why. And also yeah, I think, and I think... The, hand of the hand of the Lee, the Lee ten stop by the looks of things, or something like that, because of that inherently very super strong blue water and blue sky. Yeah. It's, um, but I look at the, I look at the gap on the left between the rocks in the distance there, mm -hmm. and there's some lovely quality of light going on in that that gap. Yeah. Sort of two thirds to the left, and halfway up. I think what I would say is it's a confusing composition, but it's got complementary colours that need to be pulled back. The blues need to be pulled back, and then it will balance up, and then things will work out. I think for the best. Yeah. Um, is this a northern pier? This is a northern pier. East this Yorkshire Whitby, coast. Whitby is indeed. Whitby? Is it? Yeah. Um, there's many, many stronger pictures, I have to say. And it just seems like it's a grab shot more than anything else. So i um, terribly sorry, but I'm, I, I, can't, I can't see anything pretty much in this. It's just what, the same if thing. If we're going to say anything to do it again, I'd lose the sky. I'd say, what is the picture about? And it's about... It's about the boards sweeping to the from left to right. So I'd bring yeah. this guy right down. But yeah, yeah. go on. Uh, moving forwards, uh, I like this. This is uh, particularly lovely aesthetics. I think it's been well treated, well um, carefully uh, processed as well. Hasn't gone heavily one way or the other. Doesn't seem to have any excessive vignetting, which I think is, a, is sometimes a, um, not a great thing on. Uh, black and white images. Everyone just goes, "Oh, black and white. Let's vignette it." I don't understand why, <laughs> um, but I could. I I do like. I mean, the overall beams are, are lovely, and the, you know the burst that's coming through and the way it's lighting everything. In other words, what we have is we have a black and white that has respect for for lighting, whereas the other ones we've seen so far don't. Um, I don't know whether it needs to have some kind of cap, perhaps on the top of it, bringing slightly darker sort of ceiling or roof. We could do that quite quickly just by getting a graduated filter. Yeah. Um, 
really soft one over the top and just maybe darkening it off just a little bit more. Um, so brings your eye down, definitely doing yeah, that. Yeah, sucks you into that into that area. Uh, and it also tends to balance up the edges with with the two edges at the bottom left and bottom right. But um, yeah, uh, I like this. I think it works well. I think I'm sort of I'd, I'd like a bit more light on the left hand side here. But um, uh, yeah, but let's continue onwards. Uh, crop straight away. I'm just going to do it again. I think people, what you need to do is tighten up your compositions more. Really look at, at what it is that's um, you know that, that, that get. In other words, people turn around to me and say, "David, you're a miserable moaning git." When I turn up and do things, because I'm there, I'm all happy to be there, and I really want to be there. And as soon as I get there, I'm like, "Right, this isn't good. That's not good. This rocks and rubbish. I've got to go and wander around and find X and Y." And it was like, "Oh God, you're so miserable." <laughs> well. <laughs> It comes back to the whole thing again of policing. I'm going to do it again. Uh, policing the image to to remove distraction and create a stronger picture. It's all very well to just come back and then go, okay, well, I can crop and do things like that. It's certainly a thing to do. But um, uh, overall, uh, you have to get as much balance as you can in the camera as possible. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I like using digital cameras because I can just quickly go over to the thumbnail and I can sum up. The balance of colours, the balance of tones, and everything else, just from a three-inch screen on the back, and see that, see the wood for the trees, um, and that certainly makes a, a big difference to the to the flow and the balance of, of the pictures. I'm always tempted to because this this red tree in the centre is um, looking a little bit lacklustre. I don't know if anyone uses this; it's a very good trick within um, Lightroom. If you go onto the HSL slider here and you go onto saturation. Um, you can just pick this little tool. It's like a, a, a it's just dragging sort of. If you want to call it that, what you do is you click on it. You can go up to the reds, and as long as you pick a red leaf, and then click on it and push upwards, you can saturate to oblivion. In that case, uh, you or, or desaturate and turn it into a really bizarre thing. You can just add a little bit more punch to to the reds in particular. Ideally, what would be good, perhaps, is to balance, balance it up using layer masks in Photoshop. But um, either way around, I think that sort of adds a little bit more. I'm just going to try adding a bit more red overall, I think, and try to lift it up. I can't say that adding the saturation boost does anything other than strengthen it. So, um, um, One of the things you were yeah. saying about cropping, David, we used to, um, on, a, on a couple of workshops, when uh, we'd, we'd say to people, when you've taken your shot, if you've got a digital camera, it doesn't matter about taking another shot, zoom in again. Crop it tighter and take another shot and do it again, and then yeah. you've got you've got those options to choose which one which one works. And inevitably, the tighter crops are the ones that, that are they, they show the subject matter, and you really want to focus on the subject matter. It's about what you don't take photographs of, I think. And I Get think rid of the, the excess. I think the biggest point is is it comes back to um, you know the amount of images that, that you can take, but also it comes back to the point that imagine if you had every single time you press the shutter, it cost you ten pound, which is what you know you're dealing with with a large format capacity. Um, it does, yes. generally is, is expensive and processing and everything else. It's it's going to be difficult. So I mean, if you you know if you if you were charged every time you press the shutter, you would be so much more meticulous about about tidying up an image rather than just thinking, well, I can just crop it back when I get home or things along those lines. So. Um, uh, yeah, I just tend to think that it's uh, it, it's almost like I want to give people on workshops or when I'm with somebody else, give them like a 128 megabyte flash card and say, right, use that. You've got well, how many shots is that? Totally, any of five, six. You've got six <laughs> yeah. shots. Because if you think about it, from a large format capacity, that would be 60 quid. And if you went yeah. out and spent 60 quid every time you took a photograph, you or what you wanted to take photos, there'd be a lot more tidying up going on and a lot more thought going in as well, I think. Yes. So, um, yeah. Anyway, moving on, because we're kind of dragging again, doing what we said we wouldn't do, getting <laughs> to involved in individual images again. I like this um, one. Yeah, we like it. Um, slight warmer look, perhaps. I'm going to push the temperature up a bit. Uh, only a fraction. I don't think it needs too much. And that sort of... If you go too warm, it just looks really yucky. If you go back the other way, I think it's... Uh, a little bit too cool, but either way around, it's the, it's the shadows within the image that often dictate the uh, 
the warmth of a picture. You can actually just go and grab the white balance eyedropper. But he says, "I bet I'll do this, and it will go magenta or something." Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it gives you an idea, anyway, of like the fact that you can you can often just pick um, specific areas with the white balance eyedropper, and then just make those the sort of neutral thing that you want to see. Uh, it, it's really nice shapes. It really bends well, flows well. I'm um, I'm quite convinced it's a uh, it's a good image. This is rather competing at the top here, but then again, yeah. I keep thinking that if you go and lift it up, if you go and start grabbing shadows and pulling things up, all of a sudden it becomes more attention seeking. You imagine, obviously, if I could do it with oops, if I could do it without um, lifting everything in one go, I could use the adjustment brushes perhaps, but it's kind of boring at the moment. But um, the lighter this gets, then the more uh, competing it becomes. Just a weird shape in the top right corner that's very, very dominating. Again, if you uh, want to get crazy with the crop tool, you can just grab all of this and come down and maybe even do that and turn the whole image into a square, which I think also works well. So um, either way, I think um, it's it's a, a nicer shot. Uh, moving on. Uh, I couldn't really get the point in this at all. It just seems to be a rock in hiding behind some branches that are out of focus. Um, it... it I can't really get it. I don't know what, what what's what's going on really. I have to say, I'm sorry. Uh, going on, moving on. Uh, this is a good one. This looks like it's one of the edges up in the Peak District. Uh, lovely autumn colours, really nice reds and and the larches, the yellows and the larches in the distance work well. Um, I'm just sort of thinking, perhaps it could even be somewhere nearer me, but I think it's grit stone more than anything, so perhaps not. Um, what, what I thought it initially was. Uh, nice thing. lighting, good atmosphere, it's a cloudy, miserable, wet day by the looks of things that's just had a nice blast of light that's certainly made all the difference overall and uh, that's that, that certainly has lit the scene. It looks like the light's actually coming from behind which is unusual because um, usually these sorts of shots contain side lighting or other things but it seems like it's sort of from that way if that makes sense because this whole face of this rock is lit although some of the other bits aren't so much. Um, it, um, it works quite well. I, th I think again that I, probably what's happened is, is that the photographer can't go any further right because there's another big boulder here and that's going to start really complicating up the shot. So um, so again I think the whole concept of using um, stone to sort of break up the ferns and get more detail and things like that are, uh, are, interest are interesting and again because we can't look to the right we don't know what the photographer was up against. But what I'm going by is good light, nice colours, uh, good aesthetics. Um, but I do find this a little bit too much of an anchor to the right hand, hand side of the image. Uh, Dunstable Brick Castle, there's 101 million of those on, on online and everywhere else. Um, it's, it's a really hard thing to do, I think, actually get any kind of balance out of these stones. I've, been, I've only ever been to Dunstable once, um, and I found it, that it, it well, it's a great location. I think it's, I think it's very good. It's, it's back to the whole problem of it being a played out location as well, but I think this, if this has had subtle sort of HDR style treatment done to it, then it's been done in a, in a, in a reasonable enough way. I think the, the giveaway or the thing that sort of makes me think that is the fact that there's a lot of tonality more than there would be in the sky area, I think. Um, this, this rock here, bottom right, that's very, very competing. If I stick my hand over it, um, I really want to get rid of that, I'd have probably just grabbed it, dragged it out of the way and gone and got another rock and stuffed it in the gap or something. <laughs> um, but um, again, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just another Dunstable Castle shot. It could be way more atmospheric than that. I think it's about capturing the atmosphere of that location more than anything else. There seems to be a lot of urban stuff going on now thanks to the Landscape Photographer of the Year. And although the, uh, the balance of uh, of curves, I think is probably what this is all about. The curve of the houses and the curves of the road. I, I don't know. I want to go right, or I want to see where it's going. Or, and again, the traffic trails are not brilliant. They could be doing with being slightly sort of further in, without hopefully getting run over. Again, you don't know what the circumstances. Somebody might have been standing there waiting for the AA or something. I thought, oh, hang on, I'm <laughs> stuck in the car. I'll, I'll have a go at taking some photos. I don't know, but the, but. Um, it's not strong enough, basically. It's nicer lighting yeah. and it's, it's a nicer time of day, but it's not strong enough. Uh, so the next one is incredibly sharpened. I don't know what has been done to this, but it's been very, very over-sharpened for the sizing. Um, 
it's difficult to say where this is. It's definitely, I think it's definitely foreign. Um, but overall, it's uh, it, it's it seems like the sharpening's being done with a with a very high radius. So it looks like everything is very blocky and has a, a rather hard digital texture all over it. So I'm um, although it kind of it balances tonally because you've got light green, dark green, light green, and then you've got white of the cloud and, and things like that. This, the tree on the left hand side is way too intense, really grabbing my attention the whole time. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. So, um, and the inclusion of the, of the log, well, it could be the, mo the reason why the person walking past went, that's a, that's a photograph, because they've seen that one specific thing, and then, but they can't get that to fit within the frame particularly well. So um, anyway, a good try. Um, we 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 quite like this, didn't we? If I remember, Tim. Um, yeah, I think I think we we commented on the fact that it's a little bit dark. The the, the definition in the uh, the tree in the foreground of the tree, which is where your eye inevitably ends up. It's it's just a bit murky there. But I love I love the tonality in the background and the the bracken. Um, so I think with a bit of potentially balancing of light or light at the time, maybe it could have been could have been different. It's just some, in, something odd going on with the light. That's a little bit. It's, it's, it's good because I mean it isn't actually like really pushed. And I think it's either that period just before autumn or it's the period um, you know it's going into anyway. Um, I do feel it's slightly on the cool side. It could do with a, a slight warm to bring it up. And that's probably a fraction too much. Maybe just plus. Five or ten here at the very most. Uh, it's quite a good tip actually. Whenever you get, um, you know, you want to get more golden landscape, is to try and just push the color temperatures up. Because either sometimes if you're shooting with the camera in also white balance, if it's faced with anything excessive reds like autumn, you know, foliage or ferns or things on those lines, then you end up with uh, the camera m miscalculating the white balance. And if you start processing the shot through that, it can lead to problems and more complications. Um, there's a slight lift, I think. Oh, again, I just think a slight bit of vibrance wouldn't go amiss. I don't think there's anything wrong with pushing things to a reasonably enjoyable level. It's when things are pushed too far that obviously the problems occur greater, but I can't see an issue with that. Again, you can selectively do it using the HSL. And by the way, if you're a Camera Raw user, this is all available to you in Camera Raw. This, uh, this small area here, and perhaps what you could do is go in and grab the reds and, and push, push the reds up a bit. So um, let me just see if I can do it. Right, there's there's the original that we got presented with, and now there's the end result, which I think lifts it and does add more magic to it. It's just a case of lifting it up out of the out of the grey and the and the blue, which I think is inherently causing the issue. Uh, moving yeah. onwards, I do like this. I think this is really nice. Um, think, again, really I think like it's it, got that it? wonderful. Cinematic feel to it that I that I really like about about landscape. And, um, it's quite unusual. It's like really being taken over by this tree in the background. The whole gable's been swallowed by this by this bush, which is which is really quite fun. Um, it's got a moody enough sky going on in the background as well. There seems to be a very slight light patch going up over the top here, where I think some incorrect brushing has been done, where the cloud looks. Mm -hmm lighter over the top there than anywhere else but the rays are good um, we do have a sense of wandering through sort of but um, it's very important to watch this area here on the left hand side make sure that doesn't become too dominating I feel as though what I want to want to happen is I want all these clouds here to go right and then I want to get the whole of my angle of view and come round so I'm, I'm now, now making this the subject and the clouds behind, the menacing clouds yeah. behind, so I can emit this section on the left hand side here. But again, probably the clouds are going the other way, which is why uh, the photographer's done what they tried to do and keeping the balance. But well processed, I really like it. Um, subtly done, mm -hmm. it's got all that magic about uh, moody sky, uh, but it's also got that magic, that cinematic feel to it that I think really does work. Uh, the building's perhaps a little bit, it's not strong enough in composition, so perhaps a, a uh, an old alteration of angle would have would have cleared that up, but it's difficult to say. But yeah, that was a good one. Again, I got a feeling this is Attack of the Lee ten stops again, or something like that. It's maybe maybe not actually. Uh, it's is this to say, like but... what's causing the incredible turquoise? There's yeah. a lot of turquoise in the sky. It's it, the the Lee 
I haven't got a Lee ten stop. I've got a BMW ten stop, and that does the opposite. It makes it all magenta. It's just ridiculous. It's like one's got one colour cast and the other one's got another. So overall, it's um, uh, it's, it, it's difficult to get rid of them. You can try emitting it by again using white balance, trying to click on something that's white. That will start to get you in the right right area. But you can see the C's gone brown now. It doesn't look doesn't look as good. I mean, again, we're not playing with the raw files, so it's not going to be easy to suddenly dial all this out. But we could actually, again, if we go to HSL, go and drag the saturation down to the blues. I'll certainly remove that, which has worked well. And this starts to lead me more towards black and white again. And perhaps it's all about black and white and not so much about any of the others. But it's just, I don't think it's strong enough. I kind of get the idea with this sort of little tiny subtle lines on the left and right, pulling your eye into the frame, but it's just I'm left in this big vacuous, not so much. If I had a big swirl or something going on with the with the sea, then absolutely. I think that a uh, different choice of shutter speed would have, would have caused a greater end result. Um, a not very successful black and white, I have to say. A composition is strong enough, but the but the imagery itself has some very strange thing going on with the shadows. I don't know what's happening on the left-hand side of the image here. Um, it looks like it's obviously black uh, pine trees, and rather why the green in the grass has come out so dark, I don't know. Um, I've seen this when when you when you use the um, the color adjustments in say Lightroom. And yeah. you and you really really change the the lightness of different colours, and you can end well, up with a losing the, uh, the, uh, the black and white filter in Photoshop. Someone's grabbed the green slider because remember, the black the black and white filter works by looking at uh, what colours are in the image, and then you can increase and decrease the luminosity of that of that colour in your black and white. So if you grab the green slider and push it up, it will mean anything that's green in the colour image in the black and white will now respond very become very luminous and of course going back yeah. the other way darkens it down but I think in this circumstance it darkened down the greens quite considerably but I think that it's made everything just look very digital and strange so um, no it hasn't really worked. Uh, this one was quite quite nice I think too much sky I can see the the idea with the cloud here filling that gap at the top left but it leaves you with this very very large area of cloud at the top again I'm kind of half thinking perhaps pull that down more like that. And it is about the wave, after all. It's all about the bottom part of the picture and, and the tumbling waves and how they've been crashing around. I mean, it's I, I, this, this sort of weather's magnificent and getting that wonderful steamy sort of water coming up over the headlands is what this is all about. And getting that so uh, it, it you know it's exaggerated is is really good. Um, the possibly a, a, a tumble of a wave or something a, a bit less hectic. This this wave in the background. Is Lovely. I think that works particularly well. That's that really gives it a compositional balance, which brings me again to the crop tool. I've now just thought further. I almost want to do that as well and bring in a little bit more off, off there and do that, perhaps. It's just tightening it up. I mean, you're never going to be able to tighten it up while the action's thrashing around in front of you. You're only going to try and get what you're given. Possibly clone out this section here, just that wave there. Just get rid of that. Clone some of this left hand side over the top of that. Use content web fill or something that'll give a nice smoother line going into the picture as well. Get um, tighter again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all about tightening up. It's like if you can get as much done out in the field, and when you come back, you turn the computer on, and you're Mr. Miserable again. <laughs> this is wrong. That's wrong. What? What's that? I don't want that in my picture. That's that's no good. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And all the time, you're just refining, 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 refining to the point where you leave the computer, you go downstairs, you come back up, you look at it, and you go. Right now it works. Now I think that works, uh, and that becomes, I think, um, absolutely vital. Um, and again, I think it's been heavily treated. It looks like it's been heavily graded, or something. This this section here looks um, quite heavy, very very dark, very uh, black shadows. Uh, but again, it's just lacking any light. I think that's the main thing. It's been I think it was a very, obviously a very low contrast day. Yeah, exactly. They probably didn't need everything to be jacked as much as it has been. Um, I've just realised, Tim, that my clock on my computer's frozen for some reason. So I've got to watch it. Um, I'm thinking it's 20 to 9. 13, minute, 13 minutes left, so we're doing all right, I think. Uh, I do like this one. This was this was good. It's got uh, a lovely soft focusy 
sort of balance to it. Again, perhaps a fraction too oversaturated. I might want to pull it back a bit and give it a um, that's the original. Well, that's the, the the desaturated version. I like the desaturated one um, probably a bit more than the saturated. The the inclusion of something on these lines is, is it's almost like this area here where there's a really interesting pattern could have been put into the bottom left corner of the image. That doesn't mean that you suddenly have to drop the tripod down and get on top of it and lose the essence of the snaking river. What we're saying is, is that that could have then anchored the shot even stronger because I think when it comes down to here that this area here where the sand is doesn't, it's not, although it's fairly interesting because it's volcanic sand and you've got black sand and shells and stuff making up those weird patterns, the patterns that are more interesting are here, there, there, there and there. And I want to go up and be taken more towards these so I could then perhaps use four lines of, of sand pattern coming down and then emit all of this. Um, but again, it's not. I don't think that's a situation to crop anything. I don't think that's, that would ever work. It's uh, more the fact that it would just add an extra inclusion into the into the picture and give it greater strength. But uh, nice aesthetics. Uh, certainly uh, a nice shot taken on a miserable day in the Isle of Harris by lots of things by using long exposure again. I'm wondering whether again we're back to the same problem with the same thing to do with the Lee ten stops that they're just pulling. Um, too much blue into the picture. Uh, it works very well as black and white, I think, as well. Do you brush in saturation changes very often? So, like in this pic picture, for instance, you might want that nice uh, turquoise line in the water in the distance, but turn the rest of the saturation down. So you're keeping Absolutely. a little bit of colour. Sa saturation on on adjustment layers is is the way to do it. It's, it's always the way to do it because it's one area might work. Quite, quite well aesthetically and another area may not. This is why I always find that when I speak to people and they say, oh, I don't really use Photoshop, I just do most of it in Lightroom. Yeah, it's a good idea to do that, but um, you know, if you, it, obviously Photoshop is quite expensive or has been until lately. Have you seen the crazy price of it now? It's, Eight pound um, a month for Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah, and they, apparently it's locked at that price, so it's not going to be all of a sudden next year they're going to say, oh, well now, thank you very much, we'll have our... No, really, excellent. Um, I was speaking with Adobe last last week or the week before about it. It's, a, um, uh, it's particularly particularly good. So um, uh, Photoshop to, uh, is probably the most important aspect to everything I do with images and raw files um, and getting them to a balance within Lightroom will be a specific part of how I go. And then from then onwards, it's all about Photoshop. So yeah, adding e everything, lighting changes, anything at all. That you do uh, has to be done on adjustment layers or similar sorts of things, and I think that really makes a massive difference to the, you know, the end, end result. You were going to say, Tim? Um, no, I, I was going to say we can we can include some details of this Adobe offer because I think it's quite quite interesting, and and what you say about them locking the price is is really important. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll, so. we'll think to that in the next issue. Uh, Paul and Bill, uh, not strong enough. It doesn't really do very much. It's uh, there's not much light on it. It seems like it's been pushed in the shadows quite significantly. And there seems to be some sort of haloing going on around the rocks here, where some brushing's been going on. But um, it's it's not particularly that strong. The sky looks very messy again. The the top half of the picture probably does, just needs cropping off again, and that may bring it into a slight greater favour like that. It start, starts to work a bit better. But I just don't think it's interesting enough. It looks very muddy, and there's like loads of old brown thrift or something that would have been there. Or I don't know. It's difficult to say. But we'll move onwards. Um, it's a wave. I've seen killer waves, huge waves. Uh, I quite like it from certain respects. I think you can pull out more tonality out of the um, out of the wave itself. Uh, the clarity slider. Good grief. There's one thing I want to say is not to. Um, not to jack it around too much because I only will rarely go above 10. Uh, it gives you an absolutely huge 100% increase and I'll rarely do more than 10, 15 at the very most because it's so destructive. Again, if it's a contrast thing, if you're wanting to bring out more contrast, there are plenty of ways of doing this within, within Photoshop. And it's all about, I think, learning what these techniques are. And the clarity um, tool is quite nice that you can apply it in the, uh, the, the brush tool as well now, so you can just apply it yeah. to the areas where you need it. It seems like, if anything, it needs to come down a bit to get more tonality out of the waves. Because there's a lot of action going on here. I just don't think it's, it's very prominent at the moment. 
Anyway, moving onwards. This looks like I'm trying to think. This is I think this is Thatcher's Rock in Torquay. I don't exactly know. Yeah. Um, it looks like he's up on the headland, just looking down over Thatcher's Rock with Brixham in the distance. Not too far from where I live. Uh, do we want this section in the bottom left corner, or do we want more of it to balance it up and put Thatcher's Rock in the centre, in a sort of frame of trees, which I think could have worked quite well. I like the the, the cloud patterns, so like a big hoop going over in the background there, that works well. Uh, I could claim that out, the vapor trail going up through, because that doesn't do anything. little boat coming through, that's nice. And there's a slight subtle zigzag going through the water there, which is, uh, which is also good. Again, I think the aesthetics are nice. I think it's a, a, I think it works to a certain degree, but then there's there's the lack of compositional thought. I've never photographed Thatcher's Rock because I've never found it to be anything other than just a rock. It's just, it's like a large a large pebble. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have much charisma going for it, but uh, again, I think it, it I think it kind of works okay, but it, it, it's not strong enough overall. I play with receding waves. Look at the division here. We've got this area here at the top, and we have all this area here at the bottom, and then in the middle where it would have been a, a pull back wave or something like that. I think the, the, there's either not enough texture happening because of the uh, um, the nature of the wave, whether it was you know not intense enough, or, or whether the shutter speed was too long could be the other reason as well. Um, Again, it's okay, but you're left with this massive gap. There's a very, very big gap in the middle where there's not a lot going on. And what you want to do is get the camera much lower, and that would then create a, a, a more even balance and a split between it, or fill it with good texture, which could have been through a decent wave or um, play with shutter speed. Uh, moving on. I quite like the way the sort of tree looks like it's being enveloped, whatever's going on in the background, but it doesn't do very much for me, I have to say. I'm just left with this kind of odd shape, but it's a, it's an abstract, and I'm, I'm not too sure what's going on. Um, uh, it's very dark overall as well, but I think also dark in its emotional content doesn't seem to. Sort I like of... the I like the um, almost uh, tunnel underneath the right hand uh, trunk. What do you mean so here? It, yeah, so it's almost like there's a couple of different subjects vying for attention. So you can almost take the well, top off the like... picture off. I almost on the feel like what we did, what we're doing, is post-rationalising all of this stuff, sort of yeah. thinking that, um, that that would have been thought about. I don't think it would have done. It's just difficult we've, got, to we've, got a couple, we've got a couple of good pictures coming up, though. Yeah. I reckon I know who took this. I'm not going to say, because I think they took it with me, because I've got one. <laughs> um, I've got a feeling it's uh, my friend Ajit, who's, uh, who's over in the States, although I'm not 100% too sure. But we, if this was the same day that I that we did this, I remember I was over the right hand side getting involved with big boulders that were covered in snow, and um, I think that the uh, it was a it was a really horrible day again. It was just on and off, nasty weather. Um, it was last light, Beautiful pretty light. much. Say again? Beautiful light on the mountain. Beautiful light on the mountain in the background. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I think the beautiful clouds as well overall, the way that they're sort of arcing up in the background here. But I am slightly concerned about the colours in, in this area of the picture. It does look somewhat greeny looking. I don't know what's happening there. And again, there's a mismatch of balance between of light overall. Um, I'm wondering whether, very quickly, I can just go and show you what I think was the same day, if I can, if I can find it. Um, you can have a look at an image that I took. Uh, places. Scandinavia. Oh, there you go. Looks very similar. I'm trying to see from the lighting on the one that I've got whether it was the same sort of scenario. It seems like there's this big bit on there at the end. I'll just see if I can reference it from that. Yeah, it looks like it. Could have been. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. uh, just to critically uh, look at it, I. I tend to think that the, the more interesting stones are out here, more than what what we 
we have here. This one on the left hand side is is very distracting. I have to put my hand over it almost to, to kind of uh, get get rid of it um, to get it to balance up a bit better. Again, I'm just going to crop in on this again. I'm just going to go like that. Try and bring it more into effect like that, which I think works better. I also also um, I darkened up the bottom. I just had a quick play in Lightroom, and uh, I can understand in a situation like this where you need to put a grad over the sky. Um, you can end up with a lot of white building up in the water, and it can get very, very bright. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And then if we go and grab um, the whites in this as well, try and pull that down. It's difficult. What you, what you can do, you can often like drop the exposure and push the whites, and that will have a great sense of contrast. But you can you can um, do the opposite, which is sort of push the exposure up and drop the whites and then you get the balance back. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that looks a bit more a bit more balanced overall. There's a bit anyway, more natural we, flow going from fore, foreground to background. Yeah we got we got about five minutes left or maybe four minutes or so. Well we we were a couple of minutes late starting so I, I that's think that's better. Nice. I like that's that picture. Of, yeah we like it. Yeah. I I like the, the, the really glassy kind of Watery effects going on underneath. Really, the strong, is that strong polarization? Probably. Uh, I don't know. It could be glacial water or something. It's difficult to say, but it definitely looks like it's fairly natural to me. Uh, just is moving the, onwards. Uh, um, uh, doesn't work. It's just a lane. It looks like I've just walked my dog down it and then thought, oh look, a big leading line, click, and then walked off again. There's lots of heavy darker areas on the right and the left again. It doesn't look like much thought, thought's gone into it. And there's it's just a big out of focus area, the right hand side, whoever has photographed it would um, do well to kind of really consider. Um, the lighter area, for example, down there, perhaps could be more interesting. Some, really think about what it is. The subtleties of what's going on as well, I think, are, are vital. Um, doesn't do anything for me. It's just the fact that I can see the point with the sort of diagonal line, but that's not in focus. And it, it just looks very slightly out rather than anything else, which just distracts from the overall aesthetic. Um, this one we thought were was was nice. I think that's got some... I really like that. Yeah, it's been well considered, I think, overall. I think that we've gone absolutely long exposure bonkers over the last few years with regard to everything has to have soft everything and, and it's nice to see looking at reflections and looking at patterns things on those lines that, that, um, that, that this shot champions the other way of thinking I think or anything um, I, I don't think there's too much else to do with it that I actually really want to do but I like the overall the aesthetics and the pattern um, maybe do that and then push the lighter colors up to get a an even stronger sense of contrast, that's probably a bit overkill. Something like that perhaps. We could then even grab the top left um, on an angle, make that it is though, dark. That play of light and the patterns in the dark trunks are, uh, and, and the blue to yellow contrast, it's always a very nice contrast. Yeah, I think it's slightly oversaturated now. This is one of the things you have to watch with, with everything to do with these raw processes is that just start doing something. I want more brightness, and as you do, you get more shifts in colour. So you've got to be very careful. I'm desaturating by minus ten there. So there's the original, and there's my version. Original. So anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, nice aesthetics. I uh, do like this. Oversaturated again. I think it could do with pulling back. Doesn't need to be anywhere near as saturated as it was. Um, it's bizarre as I desaturate, so the fog decreases. Yeah. It recedes, recedes into the into the trees. I'll lift uh, the shadows slightly. Yeah, definitely. Let's push them up a bit. Even more desaturation. It just feels like it just doesn't need to be as saturated. In fact, it would probably do well to have nothing like that. I think it's even stronger with a complete desaturation. Or maybe just a subtle amount like that. Uh, original? Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Go on. There's the one you were sent to, and there's the other one. Next one, David. Uh, finally, Foy, I think this is, or something like that. Uh, somewhere down in Cornwall, perhaps, not too sure. 
a uh, lovely aesthetics to it overall. Really wonderful with the weather fogs sort of coming over the top of the thing, the top of the hillside there. Uh, top left, top right, they really anchor you in. I would probably lift these up and lighten them uh, to get a better balance. Because remember, right, reflected light coming off water is darker than the sky above. So if the sky reflects off the water, the water is darker. And in this situation, you can see that the reflection is much lighter than the actual land, which, which is actually doing the complete opposite. So it would need um, to have a graduated filter stuck over the top of it again to try and pull it back the other way. Um, if I try and lighten it up a bit, it probably looks more like that. If that's any idea. And that in itself works better anyway, because it stops the corner being really distracting. Um, I like that. So I think that works. And then finally, the very last one. Uh, it looks like leaf filters have had <laughs> had their hand in again. It looks like very, very strong bluey colours. Um, overall, I think it's uh, it, it works particularly well. Um, I think you could get away with just desaturating that I've, green again, couldn't you? Yeah, it's not one of the strongest shots I've seen from Porthos. The whole yeah. background sky there, you can see on the left-hand side, is made up of a vapour trail that's just gone and sort of extended. But um, um, quite dynamic again, but I think the action's further in. It's much further in, not where we're standing and the beach does nothing to um, to include this overall so there we go 47 images done in an hour